Eric, what do you know about Florida? What have you seen out of them so far? Know a lot. Um, they're uh, obviously an outstanding program. This year's team is, um, you know, maybe not unusual from the caliber of talent that they have, but maybe unusual with just their overall record. But I think what we saw in the regional is the team that they are, and everyone thought they would be at the beginning of the year. So, you know, the regular season and their record in the regular season has means absolutely nothing and uh, all that matters is they won the regional they're playing well they probably were uh, a lot of people unsure if you know if they were going to get in and they got in and that's going to be a you know a, a, a mentally uh, freeing type of type of feeling so I think I'm sure they feel like they've got house money and they captured capitalized on that in the regional and they're you know, we expect they're hot and they're, they're coming in here with a lot of confidence and we know it's going to be a huge challenge for us, especially given the caliber of their players. Speaking of Florida, did you get a chance to say hello to Coach O'Sullivan yet and catch up about the good old days? No, no, no. I don't, I don't imagine we'll be doing that. <laughs> what do you remember about that year of working alongside him and what was such an incredible staff here that Coach Leggett assembled? I just, I just remember, you know, recognizing, like you, you don't usually recognize when you're at the right place at the right time and very lucky. It's usually something you reflect back upon, but I just remember uh, recognizing that in the moment. You know, Tim Corbin was just named the National Assistant Coach of the Year, was just with the Team USA staff, which, you know, usually you don't see many assistant coaches on Team USA. Um, and just, just, you know, obviously everyone knows Coach Leggett and knew, you know, the, the, the type of head coach that he was, but I think it was instantly recognizable that I was sharing an office with two assistant coaches who were going to go off to be outstanding Hall of Fame head coaches as well. And, you know, just just being in that office with them, like maybe that's what I didn't recognize how lucky I was to share an office with those two guys. Uh, but I did know that these are two of the best of the very best to ever do it in college baseball, plus Coach Leggett. Um, so it's just, you know, couldn't have asked for a better opportunity and that's why I have such reverence for Clemson because this is my first ever coaching job and coaching opportunity and you know changed the trajectory of my life which is why I you know jumped at the opportunity to come back here because I hold the you know this place in such high regard almost like a a player would feel about their alma mater is how I feel about this place um, you know it just draws up those same feelings I have when I start thinking about my time at East Carolina and playing for Keith LeClaire who was part of Jack Leggett's coaching tree so it's it's all connected and uh, it's just, you know, that staff and that year and those players and the season that we had, it's all, it's all part of those feelings. Eric, you alluded to the confidence that Florida's going to have on the diamond this week, but describe your bunch's confidence that you guys have going into this one. Yeah, our guys are, are feeling good. They're fired up. I mean, you know, everyone's confident who's made it to this, this level. Everyone's coming off a regional championship. So why, how could you not be confident? And, uh, and our, we feel especially confident just because our guys have been consistent you know not just this season but you know from the day one of the fall what they've done off the field as well as on the field you know how they've competed in the classroom how they've served the community as well as the consistency maybe not every week we've had a you know a couple of slip-ups here and there but our guys from a preparation standpoint have been hyper competitive and ultra consistent and as a coaching staff and as a program and as team 127 we we couldn't ask for anything more and you know draw a lot of confidence just from our preparation knowing that we're ready it's time to let it rip yep as far as Florida just the team that hits a lot of home runs and playing at a stadium of these dimensions like how important is it going to be just the pitchers locating not giving them balls to hit out of the yard yeah, it's a good point because it's not just Caglione with his 31, but Shelton's got 20, and you got a bunch of other guys with double digits. So it's it's a dangerous lineup, you know, top to bottom. A lot of home run threats in there. So yeah, we'll definitely have to be competitive. And if they if they hit a home run, you know, we'll take it. You know, they they can earn that. But what we don't want is to couple that with free passes or errors or things like that. So we've been doing a pretty good job lately of not beating ourselves and being pretty stingy from a pitching and defense standpoint. And we will absolutely have to do that with a team like this and a caliber of this offense with the power threats. We talk so much about the atmosphere is going to be pretty crazy here tomorrow. They have to open up the softball stadium to kind of get the overflow traffic. This is what you came here for, I imagine, to see this kind of scene. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, we, we definitely have a whole nother standard deviation of attendance 
possibilities here. Um, you know, 6,000 is great, 10,000 is better. Uh, and I think this is one of those programs that has that level where we could, you know, certainly achieve 50% more capacity. And, you know, weekends like last weekend proved that. And I can't wait to see the energy in the stadium. That was the best college baseball environment in all my years of being a part of college baseball that I've ever seen. I felt like I was in a rock concert with Journey Song playing and the cell phone flashlights and that'll be burned into my brain forever and I know we've got two day games so we won't see that again but that Yeah, it's it's all pro prospects with power stuff. I mean, the guy tomorrow tops out at 98. The guy after that's also uh, upper 90s. So you got Peterson and Caglione who are upper 90s stuff with, with swing and miss offerings. And then everyone in the bullpen is a mid-90s type of pitcher. I mean, they just, uh, they just roll out one power arm prospect after the next. So, uh, you know, they, they, they swung it and they pitched well and they had to do it the hard way through the loser's bracket last weekend. Uh, but they, they did enough at the end. They, they kept a good hitting Oklahoma State team to just two runs in both those final games, and that's, that's really tough to do at their park uh, with the offense that they have because it's a very offensive park. Um, and so what they did in those, those, uh, those games in the, in the regional last weekend was super impressive, but it's a testament to just kind of how they're playing and how they're feeling right now. Eric, I know you didn't come here just to get to a super regional, but is there some sort of cathartic emotional release about what you guys were able to accomplish last weekend and wiping that 2010 out of the lexicon around here? I think so. I think I think that's what you chase. You chase celebratory moments. And if you have a chance to beat South Carolina, that's a celebratory moment. If you have a chance to win the ACC, that's worth celebrating. And then any championship after that, whether it's a tournament championship, a regional, a super regional, a national, you know, you just those are the things that you want for these guys, and you got to earn it every day, starting from the first team meeting in August. You have to, you know, just it takes what it takes, and you got to be, um, you know, committed to to that routine and have that discipline. And our guys have. Um, so every kind of checkpoint along the way, when we have a chance to call ourselves a champion of a segment throughout the course of the season and keep writing our story. Uh, we want to celebrate it, we want to enjoy it, and we're happy about it, but we're not satisfied and we want to keep going. A special atmosphere and just again, thank you to the Clemson community who made it happen, because they made it happen. You got students up in the balcony over there, like, you know, created their own additional student section. It's just, you know, a lot of authentic, cool things that are happening. Uh, and I expect this weekend will be no different. We're going to have great weather. We're going to have uh, plenty of people out, and we've got all kinds of room, not just the softball stadium. you got the turf field. I mean, if people want to come hang out, let's make it one gigantic party like those students did in the balcony over there. Let's get a few thousand more like that and just make it a, just a, like concert meets carnival meets baseball game. So I'm in. Let's go. You talk about keeping it for the players. What is the message to them? Going, You've talked so much about consistency and that they know what's expected, they've known what it takes, they've been doing it. What is your message as you go into a weekend like this? Compete hard, play hard, have fun. I mean, it's, it's can't get much more complicated than that. So uh, those are kind of the three of the things we've been talking about a lot lately is uh, just time to, you know, clinch a, a division championship and then a, a regional championship and an opportunity this weekend. So you just... You just got to put the target on competing and playing as hard as you possibly can and having as much fun as you possibly can on a baseball field with your friends.